Hey guys, this hairstyle is something else, but it's because today I'm gonna be wearing this. So it doesn't matter what my hair looks like. I am gonna be doing a Q&A today. I was gonna do this last night, like a Q&A while I mask. I've done many of those in the past where I'm like, like a mask me anything type of thing where I'm in the tub masking. I can't be in the tub right now because I am six months pregnant. Six months pregnant. <laughs> so I cannot sit in a tub that long. I can't even frankly sit for that long. So I was gonna mask and like chat in the bathroom. And then I remembered off of whim that yeah, my anniversary is coming up, my 10 year anniversary. Zach and I will have been married 10 years on August 22nd. And then I realized that the whole plan was always to go to Hawaii for our anniversary. Cause Hawaii is like our favorite place ever that we've ever been together. And then I remembered that COVID was the reason I didn't book that. And then I remembered that because I didn't book that, I didn't book anything. And then I realized that we have nothing planned for our 10 year anniversary and from like 8 p.m. until 10 p.m. when I realized this, I cried so hard, the hormones, that like my my face was so red, my, my upper lip gets red when I cry, like all this area right here just gets beat red when I cry. I couldn't even film. I was just tears in my eyes gonna be like, <laughs> next question. <laughs> next morning, trying to start today off on a positive foot. Um, we're gonna be doing a little Q&A while I get ready. That's simply it. We're gonna go work over at the other house today. We bought some flagstones. We're gonna go like level the ground, put the sand in and like do all that. And we're gonna film it for our second channel. God, we have neglected that channel real bad. The Sweet Life of Zach and Christy. Stay tuned for that. I say this kind of crap all the time and you're probably like, wow, breaker of promises. Quick funny story before we get into the video. <laughs> My dad was telling me that when we were a little kid, I, I can't even remember exactly what the story is, but he was telling me He's like, do you remember calling me that when you were a little kid? And I was like, oh my God, no, what are you talking about? And he was like, I think we had told you that we were gonna go to like Disneyland or something. And then we hadn't gone and we kept like not going. Cause you know, you say things flippantly to kids, not thinking that they latch on so heavily to these words that you say like, yeah, we'll go to Disneyland. And then your kids are like, T -t tomorrow. So <laughs> apparently I was a kid and real little and my dad had said, I think so, at some time that he was gonna take us to Disney and we didn't go and it kept getting pushed off. And I walked up to him one day, just as a tiny little child and said, you're just a breaker of promises. <laughs> Could you imagine your tiny little child being like, you're a breaker of promises. <laughs> oh, my poor dad, he still remembers that like, 30 years later, so sorry dad, you're not a breaker of promises, you really aren't. It's easy to be a breaker of promises with kids stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll do it later. And then they're like, okay, well, what date and time? <laughs> okay, let's get into the video. Before we hop into the video, I've been working with HelloFresh for like almost two years now. If you guys don't know who HelloFresh is, I'm surprised you don't. They are like my favorite thing on the face of this planet. So basically they are meal delivery service. They deliver meals directly to your door in a box. And in that box, which is insulated, you've got your bagged out meals that you have pre-chosen. In each bag is all of the pre-measured out ingredients and all of the fresh vegetables. You have your meat underneath the ice if you got any. I get the vegetarian box now because the meals that I have, ha I mean, all the meals are absolutely fantastic. And I can say that with pure confidence. We get the vegetarian box now though, because there's something about the way that these meals are created when you get the veggie box that they're just the way they put their ingredients together the herbs and the citrus and they add flavors so well together whoever is curating these meals so they deliver them directly to your door and then you can make them throughout the week and they have something for everybody. So like I said, they have the veggie box that I get. Not only do they have vegetarian, but they have low calorie and family friendly recipes every week. When you have HelloFresh, it cut out all the meal planning and stress and prepping. So you can just get to cooking. And that's one of my favorite things about it. it takes just about 30 minutes per meal, I would say, with prep time and cook and everything. Sometimes some of them can even take 20 minutes. They have ones that are like quick and easy options. HelloFresh uses packaging that is made almost entirely from recyclable and or already recycled material. You can change your delivery days if you want to, food preferences, or you can skip a week whenever you need to. They've also donated over 2.5 million meals to charity in 2019 alone, and this year they are stepping up their food donations even more with coronavirus going on. This week's meal was so, 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 so delicious. The lemony ricotta that you put, we put on top of the pasta is something that we are going to do a lot for future meals. The one thing that is my personal favorite part of HelloFresh is that the meals are so good, but not only are the specific meals that you get so, so, so delicious, they teach you 
how to cook in a completely different way. The more you cook HelloFresh meals, the more you will become a better cook and better at pairing things together in your real life. Like for us, we didn't use nearly as much citrus, um, like uh, lemon zest, herbs, the combination of flavors. We were kind of stuck in our food rut. We would, we would always kind of make the same things and kind of the same flavors. And we just kind of knew what we liked, but we didn't know what we liked. And then when you try HelloFresh and you try just like the way that they make certain things, like would you ever think to put a lemon zested seasoned ricotta on top of your pasta, I wouldn't have thought of that. But it changes the game, you know what I mean? It's new flavors that you maybe haven't combined together before. So it's made us better cooks outside of just using the service of HelloFresh. Looks good. Yeah. Looks really good. I gotta get a little bit of everything, hang on. What, everything bagel? Yeah. Mmm. I'm gonna get a little white. Mmm. That's good as hell. A little bigger. Mmm. That lemony ricotta is so good. It's like so fresh tasting and it's not overwhelmingly too I much. I could eat just a bowl of that. Same. Like just a bowl of lemony ricotta. I don't know how good that would be for you, but. Probably not very. <laughs> If you guys are interested in signing up for HelloFresh, you guys can go to HelloFresh.com and enter the code 80 Beauty at checkout. And that's gonna get you $80 off and free shipping on your first box with purchase. So all the information is gonna be in the description of this video. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring the beginning portion of this video. We're gonna hop into the Q&A now. I'm gonna answer your guys' questions and put my makeup on and we're just gonna chat. You guys asked some really good questions on Twitter yesterday. Sometimes the questions are like, what is your favorite color? And I'm like, First question, has being pregnant completely rearranged your whole future plans work-wise or has nothing changed? And what's funny is when I first read that question, I immediately was like, oh, 100%, everything's changed. Everything has completely changed. My whole future has changed. Everything I ever wanted to do has changed. Life will never be the same. <laughs> and then I um, actually thought about it and I was like, well, what has changed? <sighs> Stuff, nothing has changed at all. And in fact, the only change with the future is that now I have a little human that I have to think about adding into the equation, take care of a little person that I had never planned on taking care of. But really, nope, the future is the same. My plans are the same. And if anything, they're more solidified now because I have a reason to actually work towards those goals and make them a reality. My main goals of the future are always to be self-sustaining. We bought land. And we want to grow our own food and live a simple life. Be happy. That's what it. That's what the plans are. I want to be in nature. I want to pay down our debt. I want to live a happy like like. That's really the goal. I want to live a very simple, happy life. Some people pine for a lot and extravagance. I am the exact opposite. I want a little cottage in the middle of the woods, flowers everywhere. I want to keep bees. I want to go to farmer's markets. I want to potentially sell things at farmer's markets. I want to teach my child the value of honest work, do honest work myself. I love working outside. I want to grow our own food, preserve our own food, and eat our own food. Even if you combine them with social media and with you know tech, none of those things are ever a negative. So that's what I want the main part of my life to be is to instill, even in just me, but in, the kiddo as well, that stuff, at least in my life, does nothing to make me happy. No, future has not changed at all, in fact. The only difference is that I'm probably gonna have to think a little bit more about the kiddo. <laughs> and when I say a little bit more, I mean like the only thing I'm ever gonna think about ever. Brandy says, what is one thing you like most about yourself? Feel free to pick a favorite physical feature, but I'm mostly curious about your favorite personality trait or personal habit. I like that question. Oh, uh, favorite thing about myself. I think I'm a good conversationist. I try really hard to be very nice to people. I just want to be somebody that when you are talking to me or around me, you like talking to me and you like being around me. I just wanna be one of those people. And so that's always what I've aimed to be. I just wanna be somebody you can feel safe talking to and that you can know that I am not gonna judge you and nothing's off limits and there's no such thing as TMI and there's no conversation that can't be had. 
that's just the kind of person that I am and want to be. I really strive to be somebody that's very level-headed and able to see many different sides and an easy conversation person to be around. Like I, I, and I hope that I come off that way. I just always want people to feel comfortable saying things to me or around me and not feeling judged. I hope that I come off the way I want to and that is I wanna be a nice person. So that's my biggest thing that I think I like about myself. I think I'm a nice person, I really do. Favorite physical trait? Uh, I don't care. My eyes, my smile. How do you think your marriage will change after you move into the new house and you start raising your family there? Oh my God, I love that this happening for you. I truly see it and, and this is maybe like fairy tale thoughts. Um, Zach and I could not be more the same person. Everything about raising a child, we're on the same page. Everything about life, we're on the same page. What people told me marriage was gonna be like and what marriage is like for me, 180. They couldn't be further from, from each other. People would be like, ugh, marriage. And for me, it's not the case. I love being married. I mean, I think that he's perfect. He's actually the perfect man and he is my perfect other half. There couldn't, There isn't anybody out there better for me and I just, I'm very excited. Like Zach is what makes me not afraid to be a mom. There are things about parenting that make me shit my pants in fear. I can't sometimes even think about it because I'm like, oh my God, like how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna do that because of him. He is the grounding to my, <laughs> when I'm like losing it a little bit or I'm crying or I'm feeling out overwhelmed or out of control. Zach is who brings me back down to reality and is like, look, everything's fine. We got this. Don't stress about it. It's gonna be fine. He doesn't match my level of stress and anxiety. He is the calm to my storm. He is absolutely the person that keeps me grounded in every aspect of everything. And so I am not afraid of being a mom or being a parent because I have him by my side to make everything easier. And he really does. He makes it all easier for me. I just, I mean that. So I'm extremely excited for parenting with him. I, there's nothing fearful about that because we're on the same page and we've also, we haven't even had our child yet. A huge conversation that we have had time and time and time and time again because we're very big on communication. We talk constantly about our future, about plans, about what we want to be like as people. We're just, we're just that, those kind of people. We love to have conversations about, like we, we check ourselves on constantly. Like sometimes we'll be hanging out with friends. This is going somewhere. Sometimes we'll be hanging out with like some friends and we'll get done and I'll look at him and we'll be driving home. And but this was all pre-corona. I'd say like, we were a little bit negative. He'd be like, I, I was going to say the same thing. I wouldn't have wanted to hang out with us. And I'd be like, dude, truly, why were we like that? And he, and we will sit and have a conversation. Like next time we need to be more um, conscientious of our, the, you know, the way that we're acting. He's like, completely agree. And then the next time we're together, like we'll be on the way to hang out with friends. We're like, okay, more positive this time, more positive. And like, we, <laughs> we have these conversations with each other all the time. So a conversation that we've had a lot before baby gets here is that, dude, I have this metallic taste in my mouth that happens sometimes being pregnant is weird. No matter what happens in this, no matter how difficult parenting is, our relationship stays strong and important. That's important to us. We're not gonna try to let this separate us into like, well, this is how I parent. Well, this is how I parent. Well, we're gonna try not to do that because we're gonna be the team who makes the decisions together and our relationship needs to stay strong so that we aren't falling apart first and foremost. And that is a conversation we've had a lot because for us, it's extremely important. I don't want to lose any sort of relationship that I have with Zach just because we're now gonna be parents. And I feel like that can sometimes happen because you know, you just get busy, you start doing your own things. You don't meet, meet in the middle and have these conversations. I want to continue having these conversations. So that's gonna be something that we're gonna work on. And I think we'll do just fine with it. Have you guys made any plans for the outdoor kitties once you move? Yes, so we're working on it. God, there's a cat hair on my face and I can't get it. We're working on figuring out exactly what we're gonna do for these guys because we gotta get something made for them. So we're gonna buy them. This is gonna sound crazy. By the way, the outdoor kitties, if you don't know, are, we we feed four full-time. I say four because these are four stray homeless kitties. They don't have a home. We feed nine <laughs> because everybody in the neighborhood thinks that we're the, the cat gourmet restaurant. We feed nine, but we feed four solid homeless kitties. None of these cats have names. We just call them what they look. Dee Dee, baby Dee Dee, black and white baby, fluffy baby, and those are our four. Now they are going to come with us to the new house. We have to bring them because we've been feeding them here for over two years. If you don't know their backstory, I'll give you like the teeniest briefest. I'm not gonna sit here and go into like the most detail ever. Our neighbor, we used to call him truck guy, he moved out, but when he moved, he left his cat. He didn't take it with him and I didn't know where the, who the dude was, so I couldn't be like, um, hello, come get your cat. We started feeding this neighborhood kitty and she was really skinny. Like I'm talking like really skinny, but then she got 
extremely fat. And I was like, um, I think she's pregnant. <laughs> I couldn't catch her. She wouldn't let you get within a hundred feet of her. Like she was so fearful. We would feed her because I knew that he left her because nobody lived there anymore. And she was their kid. She was always hanging out on their porch. There's like these holes underneath the house that the cats can get under. It's like a, it's just like a crawl space underneath the house. And they go under there. Well, one day, I didn't even know that she had given birth because I just hadn't seen her in a while. Still was putting food out, hadn't seen her in a while. And then one day I go outside and I see these teeny tiny kittens crawling out of these holes. And I was like, what do I do? I didn't know what to do because first of all, they were already about eight weeks old by that point. So they had been under there growing and being feral for eight weeks. So I went to go approach them, super scared of me, jump back in the hole, would look, stick their little heads out and look at me. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. So I called a local rescue organization and they said they didn't have any room. And what they would do was be to spay and neuter them and re-release them back where they were. So underneath the house. And I was like, well, I can do that. So being that they were the only rescue organization that would have taken them and they were extremely difficult to catch, I just started trying to get on their good side. So I started bringing them food every single day and bringing them wet food and dry food, and trying to get the mom to like me, mom and dad. They're both out there. They were all very, very feral. And kittens still are. God, if you saw how they freaking disperse when you go outside to beat them. For the next couple months, until they were big enough to get spayed and neutered, because they were kind of too skinny before, I was feeding them. I started bringing them food every single day over to their, like underneath the house area. It's directly across the street, my neighbor. And I started trying to pet them. I'm talking feral, like they wouldn't let you anywhere near them. And then I started getting to the point where I could like pet the mom. What? I could pet the mom? She was like a hundred feet away before. You couldn't even get near. And then one day, we trapped them all. We brought them into the vet. We got them all spayed and neutered, everybody. And then we had to bring them back and put them outside because again, the rescue wouldn't take them. They were feral, you know what I mean? Like they, they, they might've made decent homes. I think that they could have, but the rescue was completely full. So we just kept feeding them outside, taking care of everybody, getting them vet care when they needed it. The mama kitty got like goopy eyes. So I took her into the vet. She got to the point where she was letting me pet her and stuff. And I was like, damn, this cat is friendly. Mama, because I had gotten her spayed right then, I had to keep her in my basement for two weeks because spays take a lot longer to heal because they're way more of a surgery. When I had mom in my basement for two weeks, I was like, you're the nicest cat ever. She went from like, couldn't get within a hundred feet of her, like making biscuits on your lap, like uh, the sweetest angel in the world. And I was like, oh, Zach, I love her. And we had been loving her and feeding her for, you know, up at this point, like, I don't know, a year? seven months we decided to keep her <laughs> and she's mom now she's our cat she's inside she's the love of my life she is such a good kitty uses the cat box every time loves people so sweet never hits anyone always wants to sit on your lap and make the biggest fluffiest biscuits she's such a good cat so the fact that that asshole left her here to fend for herself. I hate him. I hate him so much. I hate him because she is a good mom. Like what a good girl. And she raised all those kittens. Think about that. She gave birth underneath that house all by herself and raised those kittens up to be healthy little chonks. And she did that all by herself. What a mom. So she lives in right now and she gets fed yummy wet food every single day and we spoil her rotten and she is the chonkiest. We call her big fat mom because she used to be so scrawny and so skinny. Oh shit. She's big fat mom now. Like she is a girl. That's the story on the kittens. They all still live outside. They are full grown adult cats now. And Dee Dee still lives outside too. The problem is the reason people are like, why don't you bring them in? Why don't you get them? So they all are pissers, okay? They were feral male cats, okay? They used to spray on everything and they don't know how to use a cat box. I couldn't ever get close enough to ever really grab them. Catching them was one thing and I documented the whole thing on my Instagram story one day. It's too late because the rescue wouldn't take them it's too late. They are too um, feral. They won't pee in a cat box. Your house would just be covered in cat piss. And Dee Dee, the, the dad kitty, so we have mom or Mimi and dad Dee Dee. He is such a good boy, like the nicest cat you've ever met in your entire life, like will flop upside down in your hands and let you carry him like an actual sack of potato baby. He's a pee pee man. He just, he's a feral boy. He doesn't have a home and he's a pee pee boy. He wants to pee pee on things and I'm not gonna deal with cat pee house. I'm sorry, I just can't. Have you ever smelled cat pee in a house? It never goes away. You're the cat pee lady and I don't wanna be cat pee lady, okay? I just don't wanna do it. We're going to buy them a house. Now, sounds crazier than it actually is. 
we're probably gonna get like a garden shed, something of that nature. Put it on the property and we're going to put all four of the cats in it for a minimum of six weeks. In that six week period, it'll become their home base. We're gonna put a heater in there. We're gonna have lots of windows for them to look out. We're gonna feed them in there exclusively. We're gonna go in there, love on them, pet them. We're gonna put some cat boxes in there with dirt, sand, cat litter. We're gonna give them all different things, see how they use it. They will use it. They're not just gonna poop and pee everywhere. They might, but we're just gonna get like a garden shed and hope that it works. That's our plan. We didn't know what we were gonna do. We don't wanna bring them with us, not because we don't love them with our whole heart, but because we're gonna be living in the middle of the woods where there are predators. And I, I don't know how to feel about it, okay? I don't know how I feel. I have the worst case scenario in my head that they're all going to get eaten by coyotes and cougars. Um, they might not. Some of our neighbors have cats out there and they've survived. So just because I think that doesn't mean it's true, but it's definitely more of a risk and it's not a risk here in town. But the risk they have here in town is getting hit by a car. So really it's risky no matter where they live and the risk of us not bringing them is that they don't get fed so they're coming with us and they are going to be our little outside boys but we're not gonna let them outside for at least six weeks if not more and they'll have fresh air we're gonna have screens on windows and open they can sniff enjoy and I want them to get used to us as well because they're going to have to you know you're gonna have to get used to me you're gonna have to start liking me and you're gonna have to start stop running away from me every time I enter your lair and they eat on our porch every day they they know who we are we've ha I've talked sweet to them for damn years and they treat me like I'm some mean lady I've never said anything but like hi oh, sweet baby and they're like Kah. I'm like you're such a little shit anyway they're coming with and we're just gonna do our best that's all we can do we're buying them a house and it's gonna be what it is so longest story remember when I said it wasn't gonna be a long story and then it was like 15 minutes that was what just happened Nicole Nicole Gonzalo she asked the question what is the food you're craving the most during pregnancy nothing I have zero cravings isn't that weird? Uh, all food sounds exactly equal to me. It's weird. I've actually like food less and have less cravings than before I was pregnant. I don't think about food. I don't consider it. I eat to have health and survive. I do not care about it. It is like the most low priority for me other than like, oh, I'm hungry. So then I'll just eat something. <laughs> like I don't, I've had no cravings. There was no time where I'm like feeling like I need something. Uh, the only thing is that I crave sweets more than I have, but nothing specific. I'm never specific about it. I don't typically like things that are sugary. I am very like a savory person. That's just kind of the food that I like. I like, you know, a lasagna versus like cake but I've wanted a lot more cake when I've been pregnant. Not just cake, but like pie, ice cream, that kind of stuff. Like I definitely want sweets all the time. And um, that's it. Other than that, literally no cravings. I couldn't be bothered to care about food. What is the most homestead project that you're most excited to try in your journey to self-sufficiency? My favorite so far has been learning to can root cellar. I think I'm the most excited about the root cellar and it's going to be in a hillside and it's going to have a hobbit door. I'm so excited about it. I'm putting lipstick on right now because my lips are raw beauty crusty. Other than building the root cellar, I am excited about being able to grow an abundance of food. So like potatoes, onions, garlic. Canning is one thing I really want to get into. I just don't know how to do it yet. So I'm excited about it all. I love the idea of it all. Jessica says, what has been the hardest part of pregnancy during COVID? For me, it's the isolation. I wanted to share the experience and celebrate with my friends and family and I just don't feel safe ever leaving the house. The depression is real. I am sorry and I feel the same way. I can't, there's nothing I can do. Uh, the worst part about pregnancy for me during COVID is all of the normal things, all the joys that most people experience and talk about and they're like, oh, that was my favorite. I love my baby shower and shopping and going to all these places. I haven't been able to do any of it. So really, I feel like time flies by in a normal way. I just happen to have a human growing in there. And I don't like that. I wanted it to be this really special, unique like time. And it feels very average. And I don't like that. And really it's because can't leave the house much. I don't feel comfortable going many places. It feels too mundane to me. And that's because of COVID, you know, you can't do anything. I think my, my worst part of the whole thing is that COVID has changed like the birth plan. Uh, but you know, we're not gonna get too much into that. That's been the worst part because it just, it takes the normalcy and fun and exciting parts 
and make some medical and weird and masks and don't come near me and you can only have one person in here at a time. And it, I, I think that's the, I mean, I while I get it, it doesn't mean I have to like it. Just because I comply doesn't mean that I have to be like, I think it's great that that I can't, you know, have a baby shower because it's I, 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 it's it sucks, you know. Not being able to see my friends like Sam and Alyssa and Matt, they all live in Canada. We can't go across the border. I haven't seen Sam in so long. You know, even my friends that live like here in Seattle, I haven't seen them because one of them has an immunocompromised son. You know, COVID, I just, I haven't seen my friends. I haven't see, seen anyone. I sit in this house all day long, just pining for normalcy. That's the worst part for me, is that it just is like the last hurrah before we're gonna be a family of three. This is our last time as just Zach and Christy. And it's like nothing, we're not doing anything. I wanted to go to Hawaii. I wanted to do all these things that are like, oh my God, we're having a baby. Well, you know what? It's okay because we're gonna have our baby moon. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. We're not doing anything. So it just feels very like stuck. Summer says, I'm going through infertility and fertility treatment. You always say it's the worst thing that you ever went through. And I'm honestly agreeing with you on that. Do you ever regret doing all of it? I'm getting worried that in the end it won't work out and I will regret it all. I don't regret it because it it's a, it's a part of who we are, okay? I don't regret it. And I, if I hadn't done it, I wouldn't have known if it was gonna work or not. I don't regret it, but I wouldn't do it again. Had I not gotten pregnant naturally, I would not do fertility treatments again for myself. They were really hard on me, emotionally, physically, and I just, I personally didn't like it. I don't like the way I felt. I don't like the emotional turmoil that comes with it. But if it can get you to the end goal of a dream in your life of being able to have a baby and a family, I say do what feels right in your heart. Maybe you don't get pregnant, but at least you know you tried. So I don't regret it. Crystal, do you plan on breastfeeding? It can be really hard and exhausting, but such an incredible bond. I just gave birth to my first in May. I'm so excited for you. Oh, that's so exciting. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely am going to try. I'm gonna do my absolute best and give it my all. But you know, I also understand that sometimes things happen. So that is one area. Like every, every area of this, I'm saying, I'm gonna do my absolute best to try, but if I can't, I'm just gonna take it as it comes. Cause you can never prepare for that. You might think, oh man, these boobs aren't gonna do anything. And then you might have like the most milk in the world. You might think that you're gonna have the most milk in the world and it dry little suckers. So you just really never know. Rena says, have you had any more break-ins at the second house? I hope that you're okay going to that house still. So we had the first break-in where they stole the gas. I told you guys about that in that one video. I'm gonna link it up here. Two days later, we were actually robbed. So they broke into the side of the house broke a door in and stole stuff out of our garage. We called the police obviously both times and in that time people were like, how come you didn't have home security? It isn't easy to get out there because it's, it is rural. Don't worry, we are fully set now. Like if you could ever be fully set, we are fully fucking set, okay? But it was really, really difficult to get and it doesn't take immediate, it's not immediate. It's not like you can just be like, hey Comcast, come out turn my internet on and they do it remotely. Hey, do the, there's there's steps you have to go through when you live so rurally because there's just nothing available. Because even in 2020, fucking rural internet is still like a huge issue. I feel comfortable being at the house. Absolutely, because we are so covered now that like I can tap in at any time and check anywhere in every single area. We're so covered that I feel fully confident and fine about it now. And if somebody comes onto that property, I will know in real time. It wasn't as weird or sinister as we thought. Cause the first time when they stole only gas, we were like, what a weird thing to steal. What is your angle? What is your purpose for this? And then the second stuff that they stole, I was like, oh, you're just thieves. You're just stealing shit. <laughs> okay. So this isn't some sinister plan. It's like, you're just, you found a house that was vacant and stole shit out of it. What vibe do you want your nursery to have? I know you mentioned having the bassinet in your room, um, but still need room for clothes, changing table, etc. I have a video coming up soon where I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. I talk about like plans and design for a nursery, so that's coming up soon. But I'm also gonna do one where I want you guys to sit down with me and like we're gonna design, design it together. I have a Pinterest board going, I've got, I've got it all. So that's coming. Do you have Halloween costumes picked out for baby already? Baby will not be born by Halloween but baby will be a Christmas baby. And I have little Christmas outfits already a little picked out. <laughs> Riri says, do you think your content will change after you've had the baby? I know a lot of people change into more of a lifestyle channel as it's easier to manage as you have a limited amount of time when becoming a parent. You know, I'm gonna cross that bridge when we get there. I'm trying not to think too much about future content, not because I'm not trying to plan, but because sometimes plans are just that. 
plans and you don't know what kind of, you don't know how things are gonna go. Maybe I like find parenting to be so easy. Maybe it's the most difficult thing I've literally ever done and I'm not gonna know until I get to that point. I naturally love lifestyle content. It's so funny because on my channel, and maybe it's for fear of not wanting to change my content because I'm in fear that my channel is just absolutely gonna die. Um, I love makeup, I love talking about it, I love doing it. I love lifestyle videos. I love vlogs. I love when people just sit down and talk to me about their life or like, I, like our second channel, lie to my life. Like I love that channel and I love those kind of videos. I do not actually even watch makeup content that often. I mean, I will watch reviews of products that I was interested in. Uh, I more or less just really love lifestyle content. It's it's who I am as a person. I love watching people talk about their like hopes and dreams and fears and I love I just I love it all. So, by the way, these are the new ColourPop lip oils. I like them. The texture divine. But I love the kind of like lifestyle-y stuff. So, it's really hard to say um, what you know is gonna happen to content because I think I'm just gonna film what I want when I want to and not try to put too much of a label on top of it. I just kind of wanna play it by ear and see how it goes and see what you guys are interested in and see what I'm interested in at the moment. I think when I set too much of a plan and like I have too clear of an idea of what things are going to be like, that's when things can get really stressful. So I'm just trying to play it by ear and hopefully you guys are still interested in whatever I decide to post. That's the biggest feature as a youtuber is that you're going to become you know that people are going to just find your channel completely irrelevant or uninteresting or that you're going to fall off you just you don't want that to happen uh but as long as i just keep being myself being honest being forthcoming and posting things that i find to be of value i think that it doesn't matter you know if you want to watch it, you will watch and I hope you do. And it's, nothing's going to change so drastically. It's not like I'm going to become a rug washing channel. Uh, but more or less, I probably will just continue talking about life and how feelings are and how things really are. Um, I started my channel not only as a makeup channel, but really as raw beauty Chrissy. I just want to be honest about everything. Just very open, honest, forthcoming, no shits given, being who I am. And that has gotten harder as I have been on YouTube. Let me tell you what. How has your life changed with the growth of your channel and the success of your launch? How has engaging with your followers changed or has it? What is it like having a high level of engagement that you're scrolling through pages and pages of comments on social media? How has my life changed in the growth of my channel and success of my launch? My life hasn't really changed at all in, in the terms of like um, who I am as a person. I, I'm the same no matter if I have a million followers, if I have a thousand followers, I'm just, I'm, I feel like I'm the same person. In that regard, not a lot has changed. What has changed is the way I feel towards YouTube. And I talked about this a little bit on my Twitter the other day about how I overthink everything that I put up on YouTube because I have gotten to a point where the audience is large and it's what you always dream of as a creator. You dream of growth. You dream of more people watching and being able to say like, I have a million subscribers. Like, what a cool accomplishment and I am, I cannot believe a million people give a shit about what I have to say. I tell you that right now. And you dream of it and you want it and as soon as it gets here, it comes with huge responsibility. And I do not take that responsibility lightly. What it has done for me is make me question myself as a human being, a content creator and an influencer. Not be not beyond like influencer, but like a person who has influence over a large group of people. So much so that I don't even know what to post anymore. And so many people say, well, your channel grew because you were blank, blank, blank. Because you said blah, blah, blah. You didn't overthink, blah, blah, blah. Trust me when I say, I know all of it. I know it, I already know. It doesn't matter how much you know it though, because as soon as you know, okay, if I post this video and I say this thing that I want to say that I wouldn't have been afraid to say before, but if I say this, a million people are going to see it. And of those million people, people might take what I say and cling to it. And that's a really huge responsibility that I feel like many influencers take extremely lightly and don't care about. So many people out there are talking about shit and saying shit and showing themselves partying and doing stuff where I go, do you not realize that you have 10 million people watching or you have 5 million people watching? Like how can you so flippantly put this shit out there that you know is influencing generations? And I'm not that big of an influencer. Let's be honest for a moment. But a million people is nothing to laugh at. I, I take that shit so 
seriously. So that's what I want to be a good influence in the way that I want to talk about things that matter. I want to make sure that I'm not flippantly saying things that are extremely, <laughs> that could be so concerning or that could make somebody do something so stupid or that people are going to think like, wow, she did that so I can do that. I don't want to do that unless it's something positive because it matters. It does matter. And some influencers are like, I never wanted to be a role model. I don't care what you wanted to be. You are. <laughs> You fucking are. You, you don't get a say that you don't want to be one when you get a benefit from being one. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't care that you don't want to be. I never asked to be a role model. No, but you worked really super hard to get 5 million subscribers. You knew what subscribers were, right? You knew what having a following meant, right? You knew that that means that people will hang on your every word and that, and that it matters. I hate that shit. I never wanted this. Yes, you did. That's exactly what you want. You of course wanted to be famous and you wanted to, you wanted to have all these people hanging on your every word, but then you don't want the responsibility that comes with it. Well, you can't have it both ways. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You have to have, you, you, have, to, you have to just understand that subscribers come with responsibility. That's the hardest part for me is that I question everything I put out on the internet now. I really, really, really rewatch everything I say 8,000 times. It's not because I have changed so much. I mean, I have. I've changed so much everyone changes every single day but more that i have a bigger audience now how has my life changed well mostly mo mostly anxiety <laughs> surrounding uh what i put out there and making sure that you know people like it but not only that people like it but that i'm being responsible with my content so anyway um how has your channel grown with this or changed with the success of your launch to me it's just it still feels like a dream that happened that i don't even um i can't i can't quantify it it doesn't it's it's weird. I can't, I can't explain it in any other way than to say it's just unbelievable to me. Uh, my life, my life doesn't change though. I don't live anywhere where my life would really change. You know, I live away from everybody. There's no other like influencers near me. It's just kind of, my life stays the same and online it's different. You know, having, seeing people that you have looked up to your whole life and watched on YouTube talking about something you created, saying the names of colors, like I'm gonna use Moo Point. That is unbelievable to me. Like watching YouTubers that I used to, I used to be like, like I would like idolize them. And like, I, I've watched all of their videos and then seeing them use something that I made. Y'all, it's the weirdest sensation in the entire world. I can't even describe. It's just really, really cool. And it's, it's, unreal like it's it's laughable like most of the time i'm watching the re these reviews and i'm watching like jackie ina use my palette and say positive things about it and like talk how good the pigment is and all this kind of stuff and i'm just sitting there watching the video laughing because it's like i don't know i i, I just it's unbelievable it's like i'm it's like i'm watching a dream or i'm watching somebody else's life on it's so weird i can't even describe it the fact that people actually purchased it and that people actually like it. Mind blowing to me. So anyway, it is the coolest thing I've ever, ever experienced. It was just, I can't even believe this is real. Kiki says, if you were to ever leave Washington, where else would you consider living in or out of the US? Uh, Hawaii, that's pretty much it. That's the only other place I would want to live other than Washington. I really love Washington. I feel like it suits my personality and life. I've lived here my whole life and it's just, it's my love. What is the best advice you've received in fa so far in regards to your pregnancy? What, um, what's the worst and most random? Oh, the worst could be a list I, that I couldn't even go through. Um, best advice I've received is to do parenting your own way. Stop listening to other people who feel like they have a say because they're not the one parenting your child. I, I actually made a whole rant video about this. I don't think I'm gonna upload it. I really don't. It's just way too negative. And I feel like you guys would be like, okay, Christy, relax. And I'd be like, I agree. <laughs> when you finally announce that you're going to be a parent, it's like every single person who's ever had a child or knows somebody who's had a child is now a PhD in child psychology, a PhD in parenting. And they all wanna give you all of their opinions about everything that you're gonna do wrong, that you need to do this, that. It's actually unbelievable. I've never experienced anything like it in my life and I hate it more than anything I've experienced. The mom shaming, the mom guilt, the the just unbelievable amount of people that come out of the woodwork to tell you what you need to do is I've never experienced something like this in my life. Now you get that in a lot of avenues, but parenting is one area that people are very passionate about. They don't care what you think you want to do. You need to do it my way or you're a terrible person. And so I have realized that one parent might say, if you 
Don't put your baby in a crib the second they're born in their own room and let them cry it out. You're a terrible mom. The next person will say, uh, hello, co-sleeping in your own room. You can't spoil a baby or you're a terrible mom. There will never be a united front when it comes to parenting, literally ever, because this person is not gonna change their mind. This person is not gonna change their mind, but they will fight all day long about it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna parent my child the way that I want to. Regardless of anybody on the internet's advice, regardless of anybody out there's advice, it doesn't matter. You do it the way you think that your child should be parented. I'm gonna do it the way I think mine should be. And that's that on that. And that's what I've discovered. I never have experienced opinions about anything as much as I've experienced opinions about the life of a child that none of these people are even gonna meet. You know, it's just, I've never seen anything like it. And of course, people care. People care about children, of course they do. But th it goes beyond caring and into a level of like, you don't know me and you don't know what I'm gonna do and I would never do anything to harm my child. But the fact that you would even think that means you don't fucking know me at all and you don't get to have an opinion about me. So that's the biggest thing. The best advice that I have received is do parenting your way and don't think about anybody else. The worst advice I've received, countless. Every single thing from every person. Josie, does it give you anxiety to have to name a whole human for their entire life? Cause it gives me anxiety for some reason. Uh, no, absolutely, yeah. Um, I don't wanna be responsible for that uh, and I have to and I don't think I can do it. <laughs> Jeanette, are you stress, more stressed about putting out content after hitting a million? Exponentially. Hayden, do you think you get more kitties in the future? No! I do not get cats, they come to me. So if more cats show up, well that I can't control. But I will not be getting any more cats. <laughs> no! What music have you been listening to lately? Any favorites? The Lumineers are my number one. The Lumineers make me feel something that other bands don't make me feel. The way that music is written, the lyrical genius, the the way stories are told through these songs, the way that, the how calming they are and they're so beautiful to sing the lumineers have my heart and soul so right now that's the, my number one uh but we've also been listening to a playlist that zach made on spotify and it's called like upbeat indie music or something it's not all indie but it's um I'll tell you some of the songs that are on it you might hear beeping in the background there's construction upbeat indie mix okay grace kelly from mika um, Odd Look from Kavinsky and The Weeknd, Dance from Justice, Electric Feel from MGMT and Justice, um, Safe and Sound Justice, Don't Sing from Data and Benny Sings, One in a Million from Data, Rapture from Data, Kids, MGMT, Take a Walk, Passion Pit, um, Listomania, Phoenix, 1901 from Phoenix. You see what I'm talking about? Like Empire of the Sun, Walking on a Dream. This is the kind of music that's in this playlist and it is, dude, when I'm mowing the lawn at the other house, I am just jamming out to this music. It's just so good, happy, feel good, really like dance me. It's just like so good, dude. So that's what I've been listening to. It's either the Lumineers or that playlist, Rot Fire. Are you gonna reveal the sex of the baby? Yes, my family still doesn't know. We know, we've known for like three or four weeks now. We're gonna tell them soon. Um, YouTube's gonna know when I wanna tell YouTube. Uh, we'll see, we'll see when I say it, uh, but probably, yeah. I just gotta figure out when I want to and how I want to and yeah. What has been your least favorite thing about pregnancy and your most favorite and what is Zach's most and least favorite? I don't know about Zach, he's not even awake right now. I'm filming this extremely early in the morning. My least favorite and most favorite. My least favorite would be that I am kind of useless in the way of I can't really lift anything, I get really tired really easily. But in the same token, I don't really mind because it's like one time in your life to like slow down and take it easy. I just like, I don't know, I just like it. I feel like I, it's a really special time. I like how Zach looks at me and how he always tells me I'm cute. <laughs> it makes me feel good. I don't know about Zach. Taylor asks, how is your mental health doing? It is good right now. It's really good. I mean, I go through my moments, I go through my cries, I go through my lows and I go through my highs and that rhymed. But uh, no, I feel fine right now. I also understand that it literally can vary one moment to the next, but I truly just am taking each day by day I'm reducing my amount of social media because I have noticed that it negatively impacts my mental health when I see things that really, 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 really fuck me up. There are things on the internet and there are things that I have seen that I will never be able to unsee, never be able to unread, and I feel like are many times important for a lot of us to know, but there's a time and a place, and right now, being six months pregnant and reading about horrific things involving children and stuff like that, sometimes I just can't. So. 
I'm taking a step back from social media. I've also made a pact with myself to no longer go on certain social media sites and to really limit the amount of time that I spend on them. Sure, it'll make you feel good for half a second, but if it's negative, it will make you feel so low and horrible and question everything that you ever do for eternity. So there's no benefit for me to read negative things about yourself other than make you feel bad about yourself and then question everything you do from there. And I feel like I've started questioning my content and myself a hell of a lot more since I started reading threads about myself. I don't know why I was doing that to myself, especially you're not on my page leaving these comments, so why am I seeking out things about myself? But that's how my mental health is going. I'm trying to work on it. I wanna start being a more positive person. I sort of live sometimes in the negative and I can't do it anymore. It's not healthy and it's not benefiting me whatsoever. So I am trying to work on myself. I'm gonna put more bronzer on because I feel like that looks... How are you and Zach? Or how are you both feeling together and separately? I'm going through a, an emotional moment where like he is my knight in shining armor. Like. He, I'm obsessed with him and I've gotten to that point in marriage where like he can do no wrong in my eyes. He is a perfect human being. Like I, I just look at him and I'm just like, oh my God. This happened to my friend as well when she was pregnant. She's like, I literally looked at my husband like he was a God. And I'm like, that's kind of where I'm at right now. So we're doing really good, <laughs> really, really good. Do you think you'll be able to have another baby after this or will you have to go through IVF? Uh, I won't do IVF, so it's, if it doesn't happen naturally, it's not going to. I never thought this one would happen. So you just, you literally don't know, um, but I'm never gonna do fertility treatments again. I hope that I can because I, you know, it, siblings are great. I have a sister and growing up with her was absolutely wonderful. And I can't imagine not having a sister. So, you know, we're gonna play it by ear. Maybe parenting isn't what I'm gonna think it's gonna be. Maybe it's gonna be, a hundred times better than I could have ever imagined. Everyone I've ever known that like grew up as a only child has like, man, I wish I had a sibling. So I will try, but I'm not going to like have any expectations towards it. This is covered in cat hair and fluffs. I look like a set director and I'm like, action, action. Okay, I think this is gonna be the last question. How much do you love living here in Washington State? And as a popular creator, have you ever considered the thought of moving to LA? I would never move to LA ever. LA is a place of, for me, where like it is a means to an end. I will work there, I will go there, I will travel there for things, events, you know, photo shoots and stuff like that. Food is amazing, um, but it's just not home. I need to be at a place where I feel is home and I've lived in Washington my whole life and Washington itself is just so perfect and beautiful. There's, there's negatives, of course there's negatives about everywhere, but I love Washington and I see a lot of the positives of living here. And so no, I'm never gonna move out of Washington. I'm never gonna move to LA. You, you can do this job from anywhere. A lot of people feel like you need to move to LA to be a successful creator. That could not be further from the truth. You do not need to live there. Many people do. And if you are really social, you wanna collab with people, you you want to like you know go to events all the time sure that's one thing i don't do that stuff anyway even if i lived in la still be a hermit still wouldn't go to events all the time still wouldn't be talking to people all right well the uh construction is getting extremely loud and busy outside so i think i gotta go we're gonna go to the other house we're gonna lay some flagstones we're gonna listen to good music and it's gonna be a good positive sunny beautiful day outside and i am so glad that i was able to hang out with you guys today answer some questions put my makeup on and i feel really pretty i like to some people might be like well if you're just gonna go work outside why are you putting makeup on it makes me feel put together and like i tried and like i care better and more productive and more like ready for whatever happens if I put a face of makeup on before I go somewhere. So that's why I do. Um, and it was so lovely to sit down and chat with you guys and answer some questions. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. Thank you so much for being so lovely and wonderful to me and for hanging out with me today. And thank you again so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring the beginning portion of this video. Don't forget everything that I talked about will be in the description down below. And I thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for submitting your questions and for being absolutely amazing. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. You better stop at that stop sign. Thank you. People don't stop at that stop sign. I've become that lady monitoring the stop sign. <sighs> something. There was something I was saying and it was important. I really, really wanted to finish that thought. And I now can't remember what it was. Found it. Oh my God, that's rare. <coughs> oh no, I got concealer on my shirt.